right, so here we have it, folks. Everything we're gonna need for today's refeed. I am so freaking excited. I wasn't too hungry until I started doing this. And now I'm grumbling. We got broccoli, we got grana patano, we got some chicken breast, we got corn, we got lettuce, and we got all kinds of condimentes, sauces, and everything you could ever need to refeed your body, replenish, renourish, and possibly hurt your stomach after five days of not eating. I am very intrigued to see what happens with that. Okay. Okay, first things first, we got a little uh, low saucepan type deal. Get that fired up. And we're gonna get the broccoli in there. We're gonna get it par cooked. Same thing over here. I got some water to par cook the corn. Okay, for all of y'all that don't put things under your cutting board to stop them from slipping, stop doing that. That's how you hurt yourself. So I got this stuff, it's like this rubber stuff. You literally just buy it, it's cheap as shit. You cut it once and you can use it forever and it keeps your cutting board in place. You just cut it to the size of your board. Never again do you have to deal with a wet rag or a towel or anything. All right, first and easiest thing, a little bit of salad. Gonna do a little quick Greek salad. Can bang this out mad quick. Tip for you, if you cut this out of here, your lettuce will not rust as early. Also, this is called a bullshit bowl when you're making food. Have one, all the scraps go in your bullshit bowl. Now, I don't like the good first two layers of this lettuce. It's always garbogier to me. So that goes in the bullshit bowl, you know what I mean? But yeah. Salad. I got this for video purposes, of course. See through, towering over the top, not in a regular bowl, in a pie crust thing. But boom, we do that. That was down for a second. Now, of course, the reason I'm doing the salad first is I want to chuck it in the fridge and have it chill. So for this, I just want. Thin strings, open them up, they go on, little wipe ski, tomatoes. the top we go with the quartered tomatoes. Easy peas is feta cheese, which is gonna come up next soon. Pitted Kalamata olives, just pull them apart. I don't even care, these don't have to be beautiful. They just have to get the pits out because none of us want a big old dental bill, you know what I mean? I don't got the funds for it, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> But yeah, just pull these apart. Even distribution, that's what life's about. Balance and distributions. And then lastly, maybe I'll bring you in for this, this drizz, the final drizz. That a baby. Not difficult. One of the easiest salads you'll ever make. Into the fridge that goes. Okay, so this broccoli water is giving me hella attitude. So I gotta get it in quick. Literally for this, I want big chunks. I don't want small florets because I want these large, these florets big because I'm gonna throw them on the barbecue to get a good char. So boom, one done. Just for like a soft, soft steam. I don't wanna get them too cooked, just a little par cook. Okay, well that's all firing off. Let's get the breading for the keto parm crusted chicken that we're gonna have. First things first, get this beautiful Parmesan cheese out the wrapper and on grind mode. Should be sufficient, probably too much. I am so tempted to take a, a little pinch of this, but I promise I am not having a single bite of food 
until you see me on camera and it's going to be about 130 hours of being fasted so into this bowl that goes all right now that's clean because i'm a clean freak we got that so i'm going a portion of this mixture is going to be the grated cheese and then a portion is going to be the powdered parm and then this is where it gets keto for the part like the fried part you got almond flour and then we're just gonna mix that together give it a good stir like the tilt a whirl when you're a kid that you maybe got a sick sore stomach on at the fair give it a good mix it's done easy peas I know that seems counterintuitive to do it there and transfer here but this is for when I actually bread the chicken itself Basically, bread it, cheese it. Just need a, a lower dish to kind of do it in. Gotta keep rolling, 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 rolling. What's it? Rolling, rolling, boil, what, what? We're at a rolling boil. That's the limp biscuit version of the rolling boil. These boys in there, as simple as that. It's easy. Now let's check on this little broccoli. Ooh, steam. Now I don't want it to be fork tender. It still has some structure to it, but it is getting a little soft on the top, but on the stem, it's still quite hard. So I'll give that another minute or two. Okay, in the meantime, we got a pound on these breasts. So parchment down, that way you save yourself any cutting board issues, but we're also gonna pound these out a little flat. Two big boy breasts, quite big. Not much on there to trim off. Seems all pretty good. Slap her in. Fold over. Get the fatty side near my right hand because that's where all my, my power is. Maybe it'd make a little extra room for it to go somewhere where it, when it flattens. Wash your hands before you touch your rolling pin. And in this case, it's a wine bottle because I don't have a rolling pin. And just take your frustrations on the cheek on that feels about good to me that's a nice big boy okay so here's the first one showing me do two would be redundant what we're gonna do is mail on here this is the adhesive and I'm just gonna lather this with mayo. Don't go too thick. Basically consider this like an egg wash, right? You could use egg wash too if you want. It's just that this takes it up to a different flavor level, my G's. Get it to the breading station. Once again, we gotta do this ever so gingerly. Now, I don't think that this recipe is supposed to be like when you make it with flour and that, like it's not supposed to crust everything in like a shell. It's just supposed to be there to like complement the flavor. You're still gonna have naked parts of the chicken like exposed, right? It's not designed to be exactly like a deep, full, thick crust. It's just supposed to be on there to give a nice golden kind of crust. In the meantime, this corn is at a nice little chill boil. The broccoli is pulled off, drained, and nice and par cooked. These are gonna go out to the barbecue so they can just hang out together and be the best of friends that anybody could ever have. There you go. All right, so we got this fired up. Gotta let it get hot, 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 hot. But I got it in the power zone. <laughs> Okay, so while the cue is getting ready for the veg, we're gonna oil this just enough to coat the bottom, basically. For now, I have it on high. Once I see that it's ready, I'm gonna drop it down to medium, let it chill for a couple minutes, and then we're gonna go in for a nice slow cook on these. All right, the old Quantran method, something wooden. If it bubbles, which it does, you drop that down a bit to mid give that another couple minutes and then we go in now this thing is popping and bubbling so i don't know how aggressive this is about to be 
Oh, she's perfect. I was worried at first. Look at that. The sun poked its head out again just in time for this prime shot. Look at that. Look at that. This one came out perfect. And I can smell that cheese just permeating and I haven't had a tidbit of anything. I swear you guys. I think it's cranked. <laughs> Kind of exactly what I wanted though. I want to get a char on all this basically. I don't I don't want it to be like low and slow. I want it to be fast and hot. So these go on. You gotta keep it hot, keep it hot, keep it hot. So like I said, really high heat, so you get those char marks, because that's where the flavor is at, that little carcinogenic char. Yeah, we get it, buddy, I understand. So we let the other side go for a bit. Right there, that's what we're looking for. Charizard. Let's make this corn. Let's make these elotes. Gotta give them a nice sour cream brush. Y'all have no idea how excited I'm getting. <laughs> Holy crap. And just because there's so much parm already in this meal, I'm just gonna dust the side. I think that's really all we need. There's already so much cheese in this meal. So I'm just gonna dust one side. Next up, tahin. And what would it be without a Valentin a drizzle? And lastly, my touch, microplane. A little fresh lemon zest. Look at that. Come on, guys. You know you're trying to eat that. So next, charred broccoli. I'm gonna be eating off this cutting board, so we're just gonna dress it up here. First things first, a drizzle of chili oil. Next up, what do you know? More cheese. Parmigiana. After that, Actual red chilies preserved. Once again, lemon zest. It's all about balance, guys. We got the char, we got the cheese, we got the heat, we got the citrus. And lastly, the balsamic glaze. And that's done. The elotes. And of course, our chicken. And the last thing to do is pour my Nando's lime and herb dipping sauce for the chicken. 
One last thing I almost forgot, we gotta dress the Sally. Would you come through? Would you wanna have a little taste ski? I think you might. All right, so I am officially 127 hours fasted. I'm rounding it up to 130 because I believe I deserve it because I didn't have a single bite of anything during the cooking process of this, which was very difficult. Seems like the saw guy outside has chilled out for a moment, so I think we're in the clear to have a nice meal. Now, I don't wanna to say too much more. You know, I'll talk a little bit during this about some whatever stuff, but for now, as you can imagine, your guy is ready to eat. First up, the elote. <laughs> wow. It's so intense in my mouth. The lemon is so bright. The Valentina is so bright. That's crazy. My taste sensation is so heightened. Initial observation in science experiment is that my taste buds are so heightened. Oh man, the corn is so juicy and that char, otherworldly. I gotta cleanse the palate before I move into the next thing, which I think will be the chicken. Shout out, coldest water. If y'all wanna get a bottle for the summertime, I highly encourage it. Like I said, I've been using it every day. Shit's amazing. 10% down below code hoodie also enter in the free giveaway weekly giveaways they do yeah I got to figure out how I can get some chicken without disrupting the entire world here like my construction fellows over here this sauce you guys this Nando's peri peri lemon herb uh, lemon herb sauce is something else highly suggested product please definitely get it now that is a mammoth bite but i am mammothly hungry after all these days of not eating Holy crap. That Parmesan crust. Unreal. There you go, another big bite. So as you guys have seen on my weigh-ins, your man's is 11 pounds down. Long way to go. 
probably at least 20 more. Maybe 30. But I'm a man on a mission. I'm sticking to the schedule for as long as it takes. And like I said, every refeed I do will be a cooking video with homemade grub like this. Keto, friendly-ish, low carb, mainly veggies. Super, super intrigued to know how I'm going to react to this, how my body's going to handle this food after that much time not eating. I feel like it's not going to be that big of a deal, but at the same time, I could be completely wrong and just get completely blindsided and be in a world of pain, especially because everything I'm eating is spicy, which probably wasn't the best idea, but the whole time I was thinking about what kind of healthy meal I was craving, this is what was on my mind. Now this broccoli <clears throat> is crack it's a dish i used to make i made a, uh, an old job of mine that they featured on the menu It's just very dynamic. Char, broccoli, heat, citrus. Sweet from the balsamic reduction. Highly suggest giving it a go. You got the nuttiness, like the earthy nuttiness from the Parmesan. Can't forget the Greek salad. Gotta get a bite of that. Didn't have any cucumbers, unfortunately. But it's still all good. Mm-hmm. That's what I needed that freshness to, to cut through that heat. Amazing. Man. A good Greek salad. What is that? Oh, I got it. From there. Shit. Need one more bite of this salad over here. It's so hard to hold it up for you. Just don't have everything in frame, but oh well. Tell you one thing for absolutely sure what i'm noticing immediately is my stomach capacity has shrunk i am already getting fatigued I feel like I definitely want to finish this piece of chicken and maybe one more corn. And 
because I'm going to be toast. That's crazy. I feel like in my heyday, in my normal life, I could usually eat two, definitely two, both these chickens. At least half of that salad, probably all these corns. But I am immediately dazed. I'm a huge fan of the show Survivor. And I feel like what's gonna to happen to me is what happens on that show when they win food or like when they win the reward of like going to the place that's like a catered, it's like catered by Outback Steakhouse on an island. And they're like so depleted of everything and they just smash food. And then we get when they get back to camp there's people that are like keeled over, just in terrible gut pain. Some of them barf and get sick. So hopefully that doesn't happen to me. I don't think it will because I'm not going to push myself to be crazy full. I do want a bite of this corn. I don't want to have this side though because it's honestly too intense on my taste buds. Mm -hmm. Just the chiller side will have to do. Hmm. Wow. I can't believe how I feel after just a couple veggies and a chicken. That is insane to me. But maybe a good thing, resetting my body back to basics. Back to how a normal appetite should be. Fist. That's what your stomach is supposed to hold, a fist worth of food. <sighs> yeah, that's got to be it for me. I'm sacked. So full. But that was delicious. I hope you guys enjoyed the cooking aspect. Learned something along the way, maybe in the recipes. And uh, enjoyed the me not being able to eat very much. <laughs> Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true.